<laughs> our after experience is it's kind of tough to explain because um, like when people come down here they don't quite understand what they're getting themselves into there's challenges but there's a lot of highs too it's a very fun trip but there's ups and downs and you get tired but the experience as a whole is just an incredible one it's an experience that you know money can't buy People like myself would never have an opportunity to see this part of the world and see these people and have this camaraderie and be a part of a team that's something so much bigger. It's not just about the trucks and just about running and you know running through. It's about it's about the people. And that's what makes it what it is. You have to experience in person. It's something that you have to go and see for yourself because it's amazing where you can go from like we were talking pine trees to open desert with cactus along the ocean and, and mountains and flats and salt flats. If you think that you may want to do this trip, you have to do it. It'll be so much better than you even imagined. Cannot come up with a word to describe um, what we saw. It was just epic. We come around a corner and you're looking up right the, the ocean on one side, the mountain on the other side, and this little trail alongside the uh, uh, in between, and it was just it was amazing. I'm one of those guys who's been down here for decades. I saw stuff on this trip with Texas Raptor Runs that I've never seen before. It, you could look around and see, oh my gosh, I didn't know that Baja California, I thought it was a desert, I thought it was desolate. It's just beautiful. It's hard to explain the excitement of driving off-road and then the nervousness of the potential breakdown or mistake that you could make while driving your Raptor. But overall, it's a great experience and it's something that uh, I love to do for as many years as I can. Baja was made for the Raptor or the Raptor was made for Baja. Buy the ticket, take the ride. My name is Trey Palrero. I'm the founder of the Texas and Baja Raptor Runs. 2008, it's gonna sound cliche, but I watched Dust of Glory and decided I needed to go to Baja. I bought a Ford Raptor and started coming down here and doing trips with my friends and just realized this, this place is so wonderful. That once you come down here, like it gets in your blood and all you wanna do is come back to Baja. Baja Raptor Run is probably one of the most unique experiences you'll ever get. Uh, it's really about you being out in the middle of Baja, in the middle of nowhere, some of the uh, smallest fishing villages you'll ever see. Uh, beautiful scenery, beautiful beaches. Uh, it's hard to explain the excitement of driving off-road and then the nervousness of the potential breakdown or mistake that you could make while driving your Raptor. But overall, it's a great experience and it's something that uh, I love to do for as many years as I can. First enter Baja, there's like an antsy. It says, when do we get in the dirt? When do we get in the dirt? Well, our first day, it was, it was a, it's a piece of dirt called the Compadre Trail. It starts at the border and ends up going south into uh, Valle de Trinidad. That's where we had lunch. Now, if you're expecting white tablecloths, crystal, four sets of silver on the table, uh, this is not your deal. What we had instead was a pile of 30 or 40 or 50 
tamales. Now you could have chicken or you could have pork. And uh, the eating utensils, your paws. That's the way we do it in Baja. Raptor experience is it's kind of tough to explain because um, like when people come down here they don't quite understand what they're getting themselves into. It's just a little ways away from the United States but it's such a different place and uh, it's such a magical place. It's just it's rugged terrain. Uh, you have to you have to work every day to, to get down and be safe and there's challenges but there's a lot of highs too. It's a very fun trip but there's ups and downs and you get tired but the experience as a whole is just an incredible one. I knew that there would be a pretty trip. I saw the videos from last time, but it, it's nothing you, you have to experience in person. It's something that you have to go and see for yourself because it's just an amazing, beautiful view. And coming on the beach the first day, that was really the first time we got to get a good look at the, the Pacific and, and how beautiful it is. And, and, and it was just an, a, a great experience. Today we're going from San Quintin to Valle de Los Angeles. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Yesterday was an amazing day, beautiful scenery. Uh, today's gonna be another perfect day. We got up out and early that morning uh, and went a little bit further south to a place called El Rosario. El Rosario is the home of Mama Espinosa's. Mama Espinosa is, is absolute Baja lore, Baja heritage and history. Uh, she lived to be 104 years old. We, we just lost Mama Espinosa two years ago. Um, and she was one of the people that uh, fostered all of the Baja races. She supported it. And her restaurant was just a homely little restaurant, became famous for its lobster tacos. It's gonna be tough to explain each place because each place I'm gonna say, oh, that's one of my favorite places in Baja because I have a lot of favorite places in Baja. Uh, Mama Espinosa's is a great place, uh, family run for many, many, many years. And even aside from the history, it's just a great breakfast spot, lunch spot. But when you go in there, you can look on the walls and you can see history of the Baja 1000, of uh, the 500, of races and racers and legendary personalities that have come through uh, Mama Espinosa's. There's jerseys on the wall, pictures, um, autographs. There's just, the, the history is really, really neat at that place. 
and the food is pretty great too. <laughs> That restaurant was awesome because they have a great appreciation for the the Baja racers and people that run the Baja. And I almost felt like we were treated like the, the Baja 1000 racers, even though we're you know we're not. We're more like on an expedition. But it's awesome to see a place like that. All the different people that have raced and have been through the place, leaving their their mark or their stickers or their signatures or their hoods of their vehicles and all that. It was a really neat experience. After a mom espinosis, down toward uh, a town called Cajabina, we went out to the coast, and uh, it was a very fast road there, very fast. And the rains were our friend because the rains made things so nice and moist. Aside from the puddles, yeah, there was mud, but the, the rain keeps the dust down. And with the dust down, you can see better. If you can see better, you can go better. So everybody picked up on that pretty darn quick. <laughs> We are between Santa Catarina, Santa Catarina, and the coast. And the coast. We are on the uh, 2013 Baja 1000 course. We're gonna go down to the beach and have some lunch. This is about the best road that we've ever done on a Baja Raptor road. It is super fast and super fun, and everyone's just having a great time. to the coast and uh, along the beach we stopped at the beach it was a beach that you would doesn't have a name we had a great time you just sit down and relax and I mean it's just it's so peaceful it's so serene you, here we are we're driving these Raptors that are very capable vehicles plenty of horsepower a lot of rumpity rump and then they're all shut off and we're having lunch and it's just like oh my goodness that ocean sound is So Valle de los Sirios it was a, a very interesting site because you know coming from the desert in Arizona it's, it was very similar but it was very different. It seemed like a forest, literally a forest of, uh, of different types of cactuses. It's a very very unique experience, beautiful scenery, um, something never to forget. It was beautiful and it had the big the, the cactus that you only can find in, the, in Baja. It's only found in Baja, nowhere else in the world. And it was actually a challenging trail. We got into some really narrow uh, trails where we were running uh, and weaving back and forth and, and uh, tight turns, S turns, things like that. Blast running down those trails at some good speed with the truck and, and how well the truck handled. And, and then the scenery on top of that is fun. And you look around and you see enormous, I mean, giant Cardone cactuses. And I mean, these things are hundreds and hundreds of years old. And you look around, and oh my gosh, you're in the in a forest of those things. We saw some amazing roads, some of the most beautiful scenery that you'll see in Mexico along the Pacific coast. Then we took across uh, driving to Carabina, and we saw the, the this forest of Sirios. It's the, one of the most amazing structures, you know, fauna that you'll see in Baja. We come across, we see the different terrain, a lot of rocks, a lot of hills, a lot of a uh, lot of exposure.
So in Bay of LA, we actually arrive in the dark. In the morning, you wake up and you see, and there's this big ocean or gulf in front of you that you didn't see the night before. Beautiful little town, fishing village, very, very quiet. Not a lot to do for sure, um, unless you're in the water fishing. We joked at the beginning that day three, stuff starts falling off. Part of that reason may be because this road out is, can be higher speed. So when you hit some minor stuff at higher speeds, more stuff happens. Be very, very careful on this road. Remember what Trey said early, when stuff starts getting really fun, check up because something may not get very fun. Bahia de la LA, we woke up in the morning. Of course, we get up to prepare our trucks for the day and clean and make sure everything's okay with them. Beautiful view, great weather. Went ahead and went on and took some trails that day. Along the way, we stopped at the uh, Locos Mocos Memorial, which is basically something that was handmade by the Locos Mocos crew, uh, a pit crew that's uh, part of the team of trays that helped us out through, throughout the trip. Uh, it's very unique uh, memorial. It's, if, you're, if, if you don't know it's there, you'll never know, you'll never see it. Uh, only Locos Mocos people or people that come with them know where that is. Locos Mocos was around long before uh, I was introduced to Baja. Locos Mocos, the group, introduced me to Baja. Uh, and several of the people on that plaque um, were a part of my first Baja experiences. And it's, <clears throat> it's tough to be at the plaque and not kind of get teared up. And now I'm even talking about the plaque and kind of, um, you know, you kind of get goosebumps on your arm um, thinking about the, the people who's, who's, who are represented on that plaque. The memorial is to their fallen members. And uh, I mean, it's quite, it's beautiful. One of the members is a machinist in the aerospace industry and he carved out the entire Baja Peninsula in very thick metal. And on those are spots that we know we race, various destinations and places and places. There are plaques on there of the fallen members of Los Mocos. When, they, when one falls, Los Mocos guys go down all the way into Baja to put his or her plaque on there. And what Los Mocos is doing with the memorial is celebrating the life they gave to others. 2014, we lost one of the original members of Los Mocos, Farm Boy. And then two months later, we lost Bubbles also. Both of them passed away way too early. And at that point, we decided that, that they needed a memorial to them and the rest of the Los Mocos guys in Baja. So Rocket, who was a machinist for NASA, water jet cut the metal part of the peninsula, drilled and tapped all the holes, and we carried that down here while we were, and we were gonna do a pit down here for the Baja 1000. And uh, came up the night before the race and mixed the concrete from the soil here on the location, the water that melted out of our ice chest, and the Portland cement that we bought into in Bay of LA. Um, poured the concrete, set the memorial, and then came up and, and had a memorial service for those that, have, that we've lost over the years. And we've added their names on plaques uh, to remember them by and had to unfortunately add a few more plaques along the way over the years. It's just a beautiful spot. Uh, it's up on a hill. You're looking over the, uh, the Sea of Cortez and it's, uh, there's a lot of memories uh, that come to mind when we stop at that spot. After, after the memorial, we stopped at a local beach for lunch. Uh, we had our, our own wraps uh, that were made by the team. Beautiful beach, uh, beautiful sand. Uh, you can't beat it uh, in your raptor, in the sand, in Baja. 
And with my wife, I mean, I had a great time. It's just an awesome experience. Look around, here we are at San Rafael Beach. This is on the Sea of Cortez, about a third of the way down the Baja Peninsula. Behind me, this water is probably one of the most fertile grounds for all kinds of sea life wildlife. This afternoon, we're gonna continue on going southward, but we are gonna be as far away from the pavement as you could possibly get in Baja. So, all of our drivers, even though they have a variety of experiences, from a lot of experience to first experience, they all know that we'll be shaving a little bit off this afternoon, so we get all the way to the pavement, which is still about 100 miles away. I'm glad to be here. You know, Baja's, uh, it's a very old piece of dirt. It's been here for millions of years. So we had an opportunity to see something that I've never seen before, and, and I've been down there for 40 years. Cave paintings. These are done by the ancients, whoever they were. There's a debate about whoever they were. They talk about giant, giant people with six fingers and pointy things coming out of their heads. But then there are pictures on the walls, these cave paintings, and it's quite, actually it's quite a little hike up to it. We parked way down on the desert floor, and uh, as you may have figured out, uh, I'm not young. I'll, I'll confess, I'm also not in very good shape. That climb was like, oh dude, <laughs> this is something. But boy, was it worth it. It's funny because if you didn't know it was there, really you, it's, you can't see it from the, down on the ground or lower elevation. It's hard to really see anything up there. And so we climbed up and got to see the cave paintings, which it's very interesting that the, the people that were drawn on the, uh, uh, or the characters and the animals and the fish and the people that had six fingers and things that were very different, but it was very, it was unique, it was very interesting and it makes me actually curious to learn more about it. Day three, can't wait for day four. We're having a blast. Trey and his bunch have done a great job. Love it. Riding with my brother, and I made <laughs> a, a new brother on this side over here. <laughs> it was a great day. Yep, yeah, a lot of fun. Good straightaways, a lot of speed. Awesome day. Great day on the trails today. We went from Bay of LA down to El Arco, taking race course, stopped at the beach and had lunch. In my opinion, some of the best roads in Baja, and we had an awesome day. A few things we had to fix, but nothing we couldn't handle. So yeah, day three, success. So at San Ignacio, we, we all piled into it that night after we had eaten all that. I didn't think we were going. We talked about doing ice cream, but then so a group of the guys said, hey, we're gonna go get ice cream. And I was like, okay, well, you know, let's go. And we piled in a few trucks, some in the back and all that, hanging out. And we, we went into town and I honestly had no idea what to expect. And they had this little ice cream shop that had racing stickers and memorabilia and helmets and all and the kinds of neat things in it. And the people there, the, the owner, she was so, very nice and uh, welcoming and you know wanted us to come in and taking pictures. Hold on, let me interview you. Trey, where are we today? We're at the ice cream shop in San Ignacio. And uh, why do we frequent this establishment? Because they're big supporters of off-road racing and it's good ice cream. Oh, that's yours, isn't it? Mango? Cheers. Oh, that's <laughs> Well, most of us are thinking, do I want a cup or do I want a cone? Am I going to get a 
couple of scopes or one? Not Hudson. Hudson goes in there. He sees one of those big, you know, ice cream, uh, they're, they're cardboard or whatever they are, the cardboard wax, something like it. It's probably a two or three gallon deal. It wasn't quite finished, but it wasn't quite empty either. <laughs> Hudson understands about enjoy yourself in a big way. He picked up that big tub, got one little plastic spoon. What, like literally, how'd that go down? Cookies and cream. There we are. Hudson eating his ice cream. But now he's not a bad guy. He's sharing the ice cream. You know, you can't get this stuff in LA. There is a word for this. Yum, 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 yum. It's okay to repeat the word. Here's a thing, uh, after we leave San Ignacio, this drive took us out to Whoops. So when you're driving the Whoops, it's thrilling, it's exciting, you're up on the wheel, and I mean, I tell you what, you're alert, you're watching it, because you gotta stay heads up, or the Whoops are gonna get you. So one of the things with Fort El Dato is you come across these little sand Whoops, and they're a lot of fun, even almost in a stock rafter, but then they'll start getting bigger, out of sorts, and, and if you don't keep an eye on them, you'll end up, you know, hitting one too hard, and, bouncing your back end around quite a bit. So the Raptor is one of the only production vehicles that can handle this type of terrain. These cars are not trophy trucks, but they are very, very capable vehicles and they fit perfect in Baja. Baja was made for the Raptor or the Raptor was made for Baja. That one jump was up and boom, but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> My glasses flew off. My phone flew everywhere. Everything in the truck just went airborne. <laughs> yeah. Datil is a little fishing village um, on the Pacific. You come into this little fishing village and you the clock kind of gets turned back a little bit. Um, the people that are there are, they live on the sea. They, they make their living uh, fishing. They're fishermen, fisherwomen. But the people are so great and happy and they, you know, it makes you appreciate what you have, but it also makes you realize that it doesn't take much to live and be happy. One of our pleasures uh, to be in Baja is watching kids ask for stickers. And they would rather have stickers truly, than candy. And for a kid, that's saying a lot. I don't know, I, I think we probably spent 45 minutes enjoying the kids. And the thing is, everybody is smiling because it feels so good to give, as good as it feels for them to get. When we came into town, we actually saw uh, one of the shirts that Trey had gave uh, at the last Raptor run. One of the girls came out of her house and she had her pink TRR shirt on and it was a, that was really, really neat. Um, and it's, it's neat getting to kind of connect with some of the kids there. So it felt like we were heroes, like we were movie stars, somebody famous coming through the village and the, how welcoming they were. They only place that ever been that actually wanted you to do spin outs or, or burn outs and donuts and things like that. They all wanted you to do it. But it was, it was really neat uh, to, to be able to come through and give those kids the candy and stickers and different things like coloring books would, that, that we were able to give them and, and see how excited they were and happy to, to brighten their day. Uh, I believe it was Manny and Ray had uh, coloring books for the kids, like fun sticker books and puzzle books and things like that. And they were giving those away and, uh, and it seemed like everybody was really, really enjoying that. This is one of the greatest places on the planet. I love it. We're coming through here in the Baja Raptor Run uh, and we stop and give thanks to these folks because they're so kind to let us pass through this town and run our big raptors through here. And they enjoy the hoopla that we are enjoying as well. And our gift back to them is, you know, are things like candy, stickers, tablets, pencils, uh, keychains, little cars, anything that they can get their hands on that show our appreciation and their enjoyment. So we love it, we're having a good time. They're very gracious and grateful. I just love the folks from Mexico and uh, it, is a, it is a wonderful thing to be here. And I want to thank all the people from this town. Thank you very much. God bless you. 
it's a really, really unique, fun feeling to, uh, to be that welcomed into a place. It's a, Dottil is a really, really special, wonderful place. We're headed for this little uh, lobster fishing village called San Juanico. This day, we found a little taco stand right on the bluff overlooking San Juanico Bay, which for surfers is world famous. It has a wonderful surf spot, and it's famous because it has a very long, long, long break that can be ridden for probably five minutes if you catch it from the very beginning to catch it in on a good surf day. We stopped at the local taco shop right in front of the beach, right in front of the surfing spot. Uh, we just ordered a bunch of stuff, uh, a bunch of shrimp tacos, fish tacos, carne asada tacos. Uh, everybody loved the food. It's, it's amazing how the, the smallest taco shops are the best taco shops. The ones you least expect for, uh, to have good food, those are the ones that have the best food. Quite a few of us took a drive down because the view is so beautiful and the, and, the, and the water and how blue it is. We, we took a drive down the beach and ran quite a ways down the, around the beach, around Scorpion Bay, and just to, to take it all in and, 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 and have a good time. So there are several oases uh, throughout Baja and Apurisima is one of those where you actually come down out of the desert where you don't expect to see anything and all of a sudden you see this green lush uh, palm trees everywhere, uh, you see water uh, in some places, but it's, it's amazing to see an oasis in the middle of the desert, you know we've seen it in the cartoons probably when you were young, uh, but, they, but they're true, they, they, they do happen and we do have them here in Baja, beautiful place. Lopterista, man, that's another one of my favorite spots. Uh, you go through this oasis, you, you drive through it for a long time, and they've got aqueducts built on the side of the hills. And the people there are really nice people too. Everyone comes out. And I think they must have radios and radio ahead, because by the time you get to the end of the road, there's tons of people. Give them out stickers, and then you climb out of La Parisma over these mountain switchbacks. And as you're climbing up, you look back and you see the Pacific. And you look down, you see all the other raptors, and it's, it's a surreal sight. You just, it's undescribable. The terrain changes where we have all the palm trees, uh, which was kind of interesting to see all those palm trees out there in that area. But uh, it was neat how they were so thick and driving through that area and then uh, drove by a mountain or a mesa. It was really pretty. I remember telling my dad, wow, look at that mesa right there that just right there in the middle, just this big mesa that was over to the, to the right. And uh, it, was, it was really pretty view going through there. You're in Raptors. You're in probably the most capable production vehicle ever made for just exactly this. So you've got great shocks and you've got lots of uh, wheel travel, you've got tough tires. And you're driving along and there you see ahead, you see, you know, what the, what am I looking at? You know, it's pretty, it's a, it's a camper. Some guy's out here in a camper and you say, wait a second, that's not even a big camper. That's one of those little camper shells, you know, on a Toyota pickup. Doop, 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 doop. He's an adventurer too. He just adventures at a different rate of speed than the Raptors. We're all out here. The things you see, you can't expect, you can't plan, but you gotta enjoy. It's one of the interesting things about Baja that kind of makes it neat is you, you'll be in the middle of nowhere and here's a guy riding a mountain bike up a, a dirt road that he's ridden uphill for 50, 60 miles. People are just wild and then come across a motorhome with two hippie surfers in them that may or may not have clothes on and you just never know what you're going to see in the middle of Baja. It's just, that's one of the things that makes it so neat is it's just, you never know. So Loretto is a beautiful place, right on the water. Great day to kind of have a rest day, take a breather. And leaving Loretto, you climb up into, uh, into the mountains through kind of a twisty road and you come up upon Mission San Javier, which is one of the, the oldest missions in Baja. Manny was translating with the man that worked the mission. He was giving us the history of the mission and the paintings and how it was built, the structure, how it was built, what it was built from. Awesome experience, great to see some history there. So it's not just all running trails in Baja, it's also experiencing the people 
and the culture and the history there. the second uh, oldest mission after Loreto, uh, one of 17 missions uh, throughout the peninsula. We heard about how they, they wore their clothing came from China, a lot of their stuff came from China, a lot of the background, a lot of the design of the church was Arabic. Very, very interesting places to visit, and uh, interesting history to, to uh, learn. I'm from Texas and 320 years is, there wasn't much in Texas back then. And it's mind blowing to think that that long ago, there was not only some civilization there, but you know, there's building, there's huge architecture. Uh, the man talked about how a lot of the, the paintings, the frescoes came all the way from Spain. They've got fruit trees around there. I think it was the Jesuits, whenever they were through there, planted an olive tree. And I think that I heard it was the oldest olive tree in North America. An olive tree is not something that, uh, that most of the folks on this, on this trip see very often. It's amazing and they have aqueduct, um, irrigation systems back through there behind the mission. Uh, really, really interesting place. Most of the people on this trip aren't racers or anything like that. They're just people that own Ford Raptors that want to experience Baja. So to be able to sort of show them all facets of off-road driving Baja is pretty neat. If you've never experienced silt, it's a very fine, powdery dust, and it can cover you up from head to toe. Uh, luckily, when we went through the through the silt, it wasn't very deep, but a lot of fun, very soft, very enjoyable, something different again, something that the Raptor can handle, no issues there. Another piece of the puzzle for a great time. Okay, well, it's interesting because talk about dust and not being able to see, running through there, those trails, you have so much dust that you have to back off and keep your distance and by doing that it can create such a big gap between the trucks and the and, and the team that it's hard to keep up with each other and it was fun but it was it was pretty challenging to get through that that part of the trail the silt was fine you feel like you're flying and you just slide and slipping and sliding on that soft silt it's amazing it's amazing i want to do it again We just went through a section of trail, I guess you call it, that I was very rough. Big whoops, big whoops. That I, I, we really haven't been through things that big or that many that big. My dad and I were in there flying around. The truck was kicking around. By far the best, best one of the best trips I've ever done, ever in my life. We eventually ended up on the beach again uh, on the Pacific side uh, before we headed to La Paz. But we had a great time, beautiful day, beautiful scenery uh, as usual. Uh, one of many days where we we went from the Gulf to the Pacific, back and forth. Hey, Will the Trey, you guys did a great job. You and your crew, camera guys, Mark and Bob, you guys did that test job. Thank you for made us feel safe. Thank you. You know what the good news is, Will? Go ahead. Next year's always better. Our last day, we started from La Paz, uh, headed to San Jose del Cabo. Uh, we had breakfast at the just off the marina, just enjoying the view of the of the Gulf. Best day, in my opinion, this year. Uh, we did the East Cape. We went on dirt roads uh, between La Paz and Los Barrios, and it was absolutely some of the most incredible driving and scenery I've ever seen on one of our trips. It was just unbelievable. Instead of having one of those fast Raptor days. This was not a fast Raptor day. It was rocky, hilly climbs. I was with Malcolm on that, that section. And Malcolm's Raptor is rap pretty fast, fast Raptor. And Malcolm's not afraid to make it fast. But fast for Malcolm, fast for anybody on this road, 
I think I saw 14 miles an hour once. Most of these guys are from Texas. He says, we don't have hills in Texas. I don't know how to drive hills. I think, um, go slow, take care of your tires, um, take care of your tires, and, and take care of your tires. I cannot come up with a word to describe um, what we saw. It was just epic. We come around a corner and you're looking up right the, the ocean on one side, the mountain on the other side, and this little trail alongside the uh, uh, in between. And it was just, it was amazing. It was really, really neat to see. Uh, there was a couple of times that said on the trip this week that um, I definitely was wondering what was going to happen. <laughs> But other than that, it's, it's a great feeling to be in the truck. I, it's very exciting for me. I love it. And I enjoy being on the radio and yeah. talking on the radio. I feel like I'm contributing and, and I'm helping. So that part makes it as fun for me too. This day was probably the most technical day as far as driving that we've done yet. We're running these trails, steep, extremely windy trails, narrow trails. We were running up the mountain. So you're essentially running up trails that are about as wide as your truck. Uh, you got the mountain on one side and then the other side just a cliff that just drops. That was one of my favorite days. I'd say that was probably the, the best day. We just drove down some of the best hill climbing, hill descent roads in Baja. It was intense, it was exciting, it was fun, a lot of exposure to reward us after we get down to elevation, sea elevation, to, to get rewarded. We're parked at this wonderful beach, enjoying this wonderful scenery, enjoying the most beautiful day with some good friends. So that section was uh, gnarly in one way, beautiful in another, kind of like Baja. It, you could look around and see, oh my gosh, I didn't know that Baja, California, I thought it was a desert, I thought it was desolate. It's just beautiful. But you get it wrong once, and you you know, it's like, you will pay. You will pay, she will take her, her turn. Get to learn something new every time I come here, get to see something new every time I come here. Just a, a great little side trip on our way from uh, Los Barrios uh, towards San Jose del Cabo. Um, we kind of took a little side road off, and there's a, uh, biosphere like a like a park uh, protected area. We go in and you could tell the man working that place cares very very much for the place. There's manicured little uh, succulent plants that he's put out and, and put in coffee cans um, and he's got you know some animals around there and you pay a few pesos and he shows you you know here's the trail to the waterfall. And I didn't quite know what to expect. I haven't seen a lot of waterfalls here in Baja but Let's go check this out. And sure enough, you come around this corner and it's this beautiful giant waterfall down into a, a clear green pool, big boulders everywhere. And I wish I knew more about geology because the, the markings and the, the makeup of those rocks was just, wow, it was amazing. It was a, that was a really, really beautiful place. So the waterfall is called Sol de Mayo, and that's the first time I've ever been there. Man, that was a neat spot. You walk down, down to this waterfall in the middle of nowhere, and you've got like 20-foot cliffs you can jump off of. And we got there a little late. The sun was going down a little chilly, but it was, it was a really neat spot. Not sure what to expect, and we wound our way down these rock trails and all that, and, and it took a little bit to get down there. And once you get down there, it's just it's awesome. It's just this rock cliffs, the cliff faces with uh, waterfall flowing down, just, just you know, pouring down into this beautiful, clear water, cool water. Other people were down there hanging out, you know, getting in the water and sunning. And then, of course, we have our, our daredevils, our crazy guys, Hudson and Brad and Dan, of course, jumping off the cliffs, you know. And then, of course, Brad's doing gainers off the side of a cliff, which is crazy. Uh, that was, I can't believe he did that. And uh, that was awesome. That was a great experience. It was quite the experience when there was a sign that said no diving, but obviously we're here to break the rules, not, not the big ones, but some of the small ones. Uh, 
But we had a great time. Uh, everybody enjoyed the swimming hole. It was nice and cool. Uh, I, again, one of those oases that you, you don't expect to see. And again, part of the beautiful scenery of Baja. I'm a pretty risk averse person, so it was uh, it made me a little bit nervous to see Hudson and the guys uh, do some jumping off the waterfalls. But uh, that, that was that was pretty thrilling. That was that was really to see those guys uh, make the leap. Like that. Today is the last day before we head back to the States. We started in Tecate and we ended up in San Jose del Cabo. It's been an amazing 12 or 1300 mile journey. I forget how long it is, but it was an amazing run and most of it was off-road on dirt. The camaraderie we built with all these people was fantastic and of course we enjoyed our Raptor trucks. They're second to none. Tonight we culminated here at the Casa Calavera, the Peninsula Run dinner and uh, Trey had a, a, a very many nice words for all of us, recognize all the people. I don't know if you know this, but Rick wrote a check for $4,000 to a, a, an orphanage down here in Baja to get to come on the strip, so he donated four grand. It's something special that you, that words and pictures and don't really transcend. It's one of those things where you see the, something new every time you come out here. It's something where you meet the people, the people behind the event, the people of the country, the people of the area, and it hits your soul in a way that you can't really transcend through pictures, cameras, videos. Like it's something special where people like myself would never have an opportunity to see this part of the world and see these people and have this camaraderie and be a part of a team that's something so much bigger. It's not just about the trucks and just about running and you know running through. It's about it's about the people. And that's what makes it what it is. Like I said, it's always better next year has been every year and will continue to be, but it's an experience that, you know, money can't buy. It's been a great trip. Uh, enjoyed everybody, enjoyed all the camaraderie, the friends. Hands off, like I said, Hudson, Omi, Mark, Trey, Laura, come up with us. There's no words to explain, like, why this place is so special until you experience it. And then to be able to like come down and, and lead a group of people and share those experiences and pass that along to other people is just, it's, it's unbelievable. And there's not anywhere else you can go and, and, and spend all this time in the dirt and off-roading and, and having fun and adventures with people and it always work out somehow or another. Like I said, to be able to come down here and, and take a group of guys and become friends at the end of a trip and be like, oh, we accomplished something, we made it all the way down the Baja Peninsula and uh, it takes the right kind of person to like come down and like have the respect for the people that live here because like you know we're we're in someone else's country and to be able to come down and be respectful and and uh, treat everyone with the right dignity and everything like it's a great group of people to that we get down here and I'm I'm proud of the people that came on this trip. Ice cream shop in San Ignacio. Got a pistachio here. This is called What ice cream shop? All of the ice cream shops. We might as well call it the Baja Raptor ice cream tour. Somebody come up here and help me. I'm terrified. This is insane. He's driving 150 miles an hour. I can't get out of the truck. Please send help. Mm -hmm.